Okay, so, a few things before I get started reading this. So, I forgot to talk about a couple of things in the last one. Like the fact that I had originally tried to record a review of another fanfiction. You know, not me reading it, but me, you know, talking, doing a review like you would do sort of a book review. Just summarizing what went on and, you know, talking about it a little bit. Not really using direct text like I would be when I'm reading it, like with these. And, I mean, the recording kind of failed, but, you know, I didn't know if that would be something that people would actually want to see. I mean, you know, if you prefer to see this or that, I don't really know. Because the only problem with this is that I can't read it before, but I am still going to be reading because I want to during specific points in the day and whatever. So I don't know what I'm going to do. So I kind of want to still do reviews, but I also like this seems, you know, better. And yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just that I'm going to need to do a lot more preparation for the reviews than, than for this. And, you know, a lot more preparation than I really want to. But whatever, whatever. So, it's time for the cats out of the bag. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting, I hope. And this one is actually finished. I did look to see if it was finished, but I have not read a single bit. So it is, in many ways, better than the last one. So, docking points and fabric. The cat's out of the bag. This story takes place before the arc about Blake being a faunus, though it starts in this, or, or though it starts around the same area. The story begins with Team Ruby walking down through the docks to look at the other competitors. When Ruby spots a bakery, she runs off, leaving the others to chase after her. Yang, look, they have a whole display of cookies. So, how much for the whole thing? Whole thing. Are you sure that's over a hundred cookies in that display? It'll cost about a hundred lien. Wow, as far as I know, that isn't that much. <laughs> um, although they haven't really, they haven't really like, they they definitely talked about it that or talked about the prices in in Ruby that much. But whatever. As far as I know, it's not that much. Um, I'll take it. <laughs> Ruby interrupted, forking over the cash and grabbing the cookies, stuffing them into a large bag. Yang walked up behind her, frustrated. Ruby, don't just run off like that. With all those people in those crowds back there, we could have lost you for the whole day, or even longer. Come on, let's get back to Blake and Weiss. The two walked back through the crowd and noticed a disturbance to the left. There were small gaps in the crowd, a sign that someone was moving through them. Weiss was rushing through these circles, shouting various obscenities at the person whom she was chasing. Blake ran behind her, trying to... Ruby, let's go see what's up. The two darted after Blake and Weiss, only to find them chasing a monkey tailed man in jeans and a white shirt down an alley, but at the last second he jumped away and was gone. Damn, he got away, Weiss shouted, kicking at, kicking at dust on the ground. She was clearly interested in spying on the Faunus, whoever he was. The Festival, which was coming in a few weeks. Weiss, don't run off like that. I almost lost you in the sea of people, Blake scolded, looking more worried than anything. The team, the this alarmed the rest of the team out, and they noticed her bow was unkempt. She always loved keeping her bows in pristine condition. Nobody, not even Yang, was allowed to touch her bows. Which I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I don't know why Yang is being, like, why she's being signaled out and or signaled whatever, ah, whatever. Why she's being, you know, like that's what I meant, singled out not signaled, singled out in this little thing. The team walked back through the crowd, passing Team Juniper on the way back. Pierre waved, obviously trying to find something to do other than listen to Nora's rant about how pancakes are better than waffles. Okay. She noticed something that nobody else did, a small tear in Blake's bow, revealing a pink center. She thought it weird, but paid no mind to it. Interesting. soon okay let's move on and i i want to say that i will not be like 
I will not be, you know, avoiding saying anything in here. So, you know, even if the stories are a little bit more dirty than I would normally go for, I'm still not going to censor anything unless I, unless it's something a little more racist than I'd be willing to, okay, as in racist at all, but, you know, I don't think there's a lot of that in this, in these stories, so whatever, we're just going to move on. There was no point in putting that in there. Close Encounters. <laughs> With Ruby in tow, literally they bought a mountaineer's rope to keep on Ruby so she didn't run away. The team walked through the crowd only to be stopped by a woman who seemed to be a gym trainer holding a small child. Blake walked over to a bookstore and took Ruby with her. Weiss's normally cool, cold attitude broke and began to coo over the baby's cuteness, and Yang talked with the mom about various things such as punching techniques and ways to maintain stamina easier. <laughs> okay. Wow. I mean, I guess, you know, if it seems that she's a gym trainer, then fine, but it's, oh my god. Whew. After the conversation ended and Weiss calmed down, they waved their good pies and Yang thanked the woman for her help. Uh, but as they were walking away, the child reached out and pulled off a huge shred of Blake's bow, leaving one side uncovered. Thinking quickly, she took off the second side and made a line between them making it look like it was a headpiece of a Halloween costume. Luckily, the other three members of Team Ruby didn't notice this. I don't really know how the child did that, because I... whatever. An hour later, with Blake trailing behind all the way, the team made its way to the airships to get back to Beacon. It was there when Ruby turned around to give a huge speech about being the best team. <laughs> when she looked up, her speech died mid-sentence. What? <laughs> okay, I'm... I... Turn around and let out a little... Gake for a solid minute before Weiss broke the... the silence. You mean to tell me, Blake cut her off mid-sentence, that you three walked around for an hour without noticing I bought a cat head or a cat ear headpiece at the bookstore and was wearing it. Yeah, I sure got you three good. Oh my goodness. Blake flat out a forced chuckle, which brought the other three to their knees in laughter. You almost got me. For a second I thought you were a faunus. Weiss gasped, clearly expressing hatred when she uttered the word faunus. Weiss, what's wrong with the faunus? Their ears and tails are super cute and stuff, Ruby retorted, issuing Yang's approval. Yeah, I mean, look at Velvet. She's really nice. She's example number one of the faunus as a, being a disgrace to the world, like your father says. And I'm example number two, but they don't know it yet, Blake thought to their thought. The girls walked back to the ship, reminiscing their old argument. Ignoring the fact that Blake had novelty cat ears on, she breathed a sigh of relief, knowing her secret was kept another day, or so she thought. Wow. <sighs> that night, Ruby couldn't sleep. Over at Blake's bed, where she was wearing a bow yet again weird i think i wouldn't think that bo would be comfortable when sleeping and why does she always keep her bow so private and why do they look so real i always like think that like how could she have possibly stood like sleeping for the first you know before they found out but i mean like how could she have stood still with a bow on the top of her head literally 24 7 like, that would be so ridiculous. I don't even know. She crept down off of her bed, silently enough to... even or to wake not even Weiss of all people, who could be woken up by anything from the tap of the finger to a sneeze in the team, in Teen Juniper's room. 
what I don't think is actually that close to Team Ruby's room, but, you know. She walked over to Blake's bed and noticed something odd. The bow was twitching. The bow seemed to slightly twinge every once in a while, and it also happened every time she tapped on the wood of Yang's bed above her. She pondered this for a moment and and came to a realization. She lightly tapped the bow, waking Blake with a start. Ruby, what are you doing? Blake whispered angrily, causing Weiss to stir. She lowered her voice and repeated the question. I was wondering why the novelty ears looked so realistic, and I noticed her bow was twitching, so I thought, never mind, it's stupid. What was it, Blake countered, causing the same conversation to rise another four times before Ruby, okay, <clears throat> causing the same conversation to arise another four times before Ruby blurted out. I thought your semblance gave you super senses. Let's start hitting your head on the bunk above hers, but despite her height. And, you know, despite how much further that bed is from the floor than, you know, the other one, than the other side, but whatever. Weiss yelped, causing Yang to fall off her bed and pose in a fighting fashion, lightly punching the air drowsily. <laughs> the whole situation caused Blake to stifle Giggle, responding. Yeah, that's why the ears look so real. The fake fur on it was thin, making it look so realistic. You're right, it wasn't It wasn't a stupid question, but that is kind of a stupid question. I still don't know. There was a knock on the door which produced a dreary-eyed Wren with a hopping Nora behind him. Guys, Nora wanted to ask you a question, and since Weiss yelped and Ruby was talking, she wanted to ask it now. She basically dragged me out of bed to go get you. Or to, to go ask you. Nora, just ask the question so you can go back to sleep. Interesting. Are you a fawn, as Nora yelled, probably waking half the school. Blake punched Ruby and <laughs> Wow. Causing Ruby on her bed, falling asleep in a matter of seconds. No, Nora, why would you think that? Blake asked, because Pierre told me that when your bow was ripped, she saw pink underneath it, and Ruby told me that you had... That you had novelty cat ears that you bought in the bookstore, but you couldn't have been to the bookstore before we waved at you because of where you were coming from. And I was wondering, why would she wear the cat ears under her bow? Wouldn't that be uncomfortable? Like I said earlier. <laughs> so I got really, really confused and decided to, said to wait until morning, but I couldn't wait. So I came here and asked now. Nora shaking without taking a single breath. So I did that completely inaccurately. Leaving Team Ruby astonished, Yang, being the person she is, decided to end it once and for all. I just want to answer her question so I can go back to bed. She said, ripping off Blake's bow to reveal the same cat ears from earlier. Ren looked on without an expression, Nora almost screamed with delight, whilst R Ruby and Yang just stared. Okay. Well, I think that answers your question, Nora. We can go, or can we go back to bed now? Ren begged. Questions began to flow from Nora's mouth like a river, causing Weiss to stir. Blake hurriedly put on her bow again and fastened it. Nobody tell Weiss she hates the f it. Blake ordered. Fine, okay, sure, suit yourself, worthy, answered Blake, leaving everyone free to go back to bed. Blake stayed awake while that night plotting how she'd tell Weiss. Her worst fears were realized, and now she had to deal with them. Or now she had to deal with them. She connected Velvet, who was awake getting some homework done for Professor Ford's class, to meet her up at or to meet her at the statue in front of Beacon. What's up, Velvet asked, chewing on a pencil, which is quite obviously the object he took her stress out on while doing homework. Blake unfurled her bow to reveal her cat ears. 
I need help explaining this to Weiss, Blake said, leaving Velvet startled. Y you're a faunus as well? Well, I like yours. They look cute, Velvet nervously replied. Blake shook her head, clearly not having time to exchange pleasantries. Weiss hates the faunus, but not you. How'd you do it? How did you get on Weiss's good side? I need to know about or Nora will spoil it to her. Blake shouted desperately, causing Velvet to pace around the statue. I got it. Just be nice to her and always have her back in arguments, Velvet stated, causing Blake to shake her head, replying... Yeah. Shake her head, replying... I already do that. I just need a way to make sure she doesn't think I'm a bad faunus, especially since... Never mind. Blake stammered, almost revealing that she was previously a member of the White Fang. They decided to just get up and tell Weiss during breakfast tomorrow. Tomorrow came and went, Blake not being able to work up the courage to tell Weiss. About a week later, she finally decided to tell her. She called Velvet over to help her, and she quickly prayed that it all went. Weiss, I need to tell you something. Blake intervened in argument she was having with Ruby over the best type of cookie. The entire table turned towards Blake and Weiss with anticipation. Oh boy. There. <laughs> oh good. Weiss, Blake lost her words and just unraveled her bow. Weiss tearing blankly. Uh, the faunus? Wait, this isn't a prank, is it? Weiss asked, looking around the table. Sean tensed up immediately as everyone shook their heads no, and he immediately tried to hop in as a helper of some sort. Weiss, it's not what you think. Blake's a really cool person, and he stopped when he realized Weiss wasn't listening. It was then he noticed Pierre's new hairstyle. It looked just like Weiss's, but with the golden crown intact. He reminded himself to tell her later that her hair looked better normally and to ask her to the dance. Looking back to Weiss, she looked like she was about to explode. Jeez, something happened. Um, she looked like she was about to explode, instinctively pulled out Crocea Moors and covered himself with a shield, and for no good reason. You mean to tell me that you were a faunus and never told me why shouted, smashing her hand to the side of a cereal bowl? Soaking Pyrrha and Grosia Moors with milk. Whoo. Pyrrha hid under the shield as well, and Blake looked like she was about to shadow cone away and leave them in the dust. Idea what my father would have done if he knew I was teaming with a faunus. He would have sent you off, or we healed. If you told me other, earlier, I could have set up preventions. Weiss continued shouting, turning the heads of the rest of the team coffee. They looked on worried. Wait, you're not mad about me being a faunus, Blake wondered, which elicited a loud response from Weiss. No, you dolt. I'm mad that you haven't told me earlier. I would have liked to know that sooner for combat advantages. <laughs> and is that why you like tuna so much? Weiss asked questions in rapid fire style. <clears throat> Weiss eyed Blake stated before Weiss interrupted her again. Blake, are you kidding me? I was to your reason for the bow since the first day in the room. Weiss joked, fist bumping Yang in the process. <laughs> Yang, why do you, I feel you have something to do with this? Blake pondered to herself, then stared at Yang. Her stare sharp enough to cut steel. Because I told Weiss last night and made sure everything was okay. I made sure to set up some nice puns, Yang Joe. Okay. Sweating when Blake's stare got sharper, Ruby broke the tension by wondering, Hey Blake, is that why you like tuna so much? Ruby asked, causing the whole table to laugh. Including the milk-covered Jean and Pierre, and Nora bounced up and down as if to say, I told you, Ren. Blake would, 
would be still nice to her after learning her secret, just as long as she didn't know about the White Fang, but her biggest hurdle had already been passed, so that little secret can be covered. And that's the cat out of the bag. So, uh, make sure you tell me if you would prefer me doing more of this type of thing, as in me reading them and having first reactions, or maybe just more, or maybe me actually trying to do reviews of them, like, you know, summarizing and going over different points and, you know, having some specific things to say about them. Because, you know, I'd, I'd prefer to understand what exactly you're looking for. Or maybe you want a combination of both of them. I don't know. I mean, I'd try to do that, but I it's, yeah. I don't know. I'd have to just see how well it works. And then that's it. Yep. All right. Yep. It's the end. Yep. So that's, that's, that's the cats out of the bag.